what we did last week, we talked about key establishment. We introduced a little bit of terminology, but then the focus was focus on uh, symmetric protocols, and in, in particular, this KDC key distribution center, right? Kalboros type of schemes. <laughs> to some extent, what we are going to do today is for practice, in particular, if you're not dealing with cryptography later in life, but if you deal with internet type of stuff, the most important lecture of the whole two semesters, because this, we're probably going to introduce the main topic where people in, in, you know, IT professionals interact with cryptography, namely certificates. You know, at the end of, in, in 90 minutes or so, we will talk about certificates, and that is the one thing you interact with, even if you don't do security in, in, in a job, but if you do, if you become system administrator or whatever, or hardware engineer, at some point, you know, certificate is not being recognized by your web browser, and that's what we're going to do today. So today top, today's topics are a little bit of intro, intro to asymmetric key establishment. This is brief. This is brief and painless. Um, M-I-M-T, which stands for man in the middle attack, which is the most important part of today. That's where you have to be awake. This is super important. It's not very difficult, super important. Get ready to wake up in 20 minutes. Um, and then, as I said before, we're going to talk about certificates. So what's going to happen today, in a nutshell, in... 30 seconds, I'm going to show you an extremely powerful, extremely universal attack, works against all public key schemes, it's not complicated. We have to repair that situation, right? We have to find a countermeasure. These are certificates. This is what's going to happen today, next 80 minutes. Introduction to asymmetric key establishment. So the goal is we have Alice and Bob, and we're going to have a lot of Alice and Bobs today in this lecture. We have the unsecured channel. Um, there's a key which somehow has to be distributed over an unsecured channel without, um, without a secure channel. So we cannot hand deliver that, blah, 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 blah. So what do we do? There are... to um, key approaches to this distribution, key distribution problem here. Um, first, key agreement, uh, agreement, e.g. Diffie-Hellman, which will be the main part of today. You're going to see a lot of Diffie-Hellman today, just in, in a few minutes. Um, but just for completeness, there's a second approach, which we, I think which we briefly mentioned, and I just want to bring that up again so that you are aware of that, which is called key transport, which we might or might have not introduced when we talked about Introduction to public key cryptography, or maybe um, Diffie-Hellman, which is, which is to some extent a simpler approach, maybe, I don't know, more natural. 
So what you can also do is, if you have a public key, not a key exchange algorithm, but public key encryption, such as RSA, what you can do, Bob generates his public-private key pair, sends the public key over, and now what, what Alice only does, Alice packs, chooses a random number, random 128-bit, encrypts the key, so it's only key, key transport is encryption. You encrypt that with the, with the RSA algorithm, you know, that, that, that's, that might be RSA or Elgamal. You send the uh, uh, encrypted key over, and Bob is the only one who can decrypt, right? That's the idea of public key cryptography. So, and he recovers K. So, that means after this step, Bob knows the key, the secret key, and Alice knows the secret key because she, she, pick, she picked it. And now we said, you, you know, in, in, the, in this figure here, you can use, for instance, I use this key for doing AS encryption, AS decryption, okay? This is key transport is, again, to some extent, it's an easier scheme than Diffie-Hellman key exchange, okay? But what we're going to do today is we look at the... No, what we're going to do today, we look at problems that all public key schemes have, and not, not only key, key agreement, by the way, it's also digital signatures have that problem, um, and whatever else you can do with public key cryptography. So, um, but we do that by example of Diffie-Hellman. Okay, and so, and, but the, the general approach is to... Um, key establishment using public key algorithm, asymmetric key establishment, are these two, either you do a key agreement, that means both parties somehow compute the key jointly, or we do key transport, that means Alice picks the key and sends it over. And for instance, if you look at the um, SSL, secure socket layer, or TLS, it's also called TLS, this, this is your little lock, kind of schloss, in your web browser, they actually allow both both options. There are a lot of options in SSL, and in, in you and the Amazon DE server agree on a certain protocol, and they actually they allow, they allow both Diffie-Hellman and RSA. Okay, so they're both extremely widely used. You can't say this is more important than the other one. Um, so, what, I'm, what we're now going to do, if you're not very smart, if you if you're not very interested in the stuff we're doing here and you didn't read ahead and you don't, you know, interested in security issues in general, your view on the world of cryptography should be key distribution, not a problem. We have two ways of solving this problem. We can do everything, okay? And this is dead wrong, okay? There's an extreme, there's a big problem we still have, we have not addressed. I mean, from, from everything that I taught you so far, it seems we can do, for instance, this protocol, Alice and Bob can come up with an AES session key, we can do pretty much everything we want. There's no problem anymore. And this is not true, and why is that? Because I didn't tell you the whole truth up to now. Okay, and I'm, I'm always debating, should I introduce this attack earlier? And there are good reasons to do that, and there are good reasons not to do that, right? And I'm not introducing earlier, I'm, I'm introducing that, you know, today's second to last lecture of, two of, of how many like, of 28 lectures, okay? And the, again, there are good arguments to do that earlier, but I prefer to do that at this moment in time. So this is what we're going to do. So after today, in about one hour, your whole world build, you know, your whole view of the universe should collapse, right? In, in 20 minutes, you think, oh, God, you know, what did Professor Pa do with us? Okay, that, and this is happening now here. So I'm telling you the whole truth. So we're done. You know, make a check mark on number one. We're already at chapter number two. Man in the middle. This is typically written with these hyphens, ne Bindestriche, which we abbreviate M I M T. Man in the middle. No. That is it. Man in uh, man in the middle. Mitem. <coughs> Mitem.
Oh yeah, by the way, there is when we did um, uh, multiple encryption with block ciphers, you know, double encryption with DES, for instance, we talked about meat in the middle attack, which sounds pretty close to men in the middle attack, completely different movie, has nothing to do with what we're doing here. Okay, so we look at, uh, uh, I continue here because I want to have the whole blackboard. Um, we look, Diffie Hellman revisited, also nochmal wiederholt, but with active attacker. What is an active attacker we're going to see in a minute? So, this is going to be super important. This is what probably 10 people wrote in the, or 8 people wrote in the evaluation sheet. It's good that Professor Pa alerts us when we have to be awake. This is this moment in time. Super important. Okay. Including the last row. Yeah, Sie, genau. Haben Sie mit? Ich habe gerade gesagt, irgendwie. 18% der Leute haben in dem Evaluierungsbogen geschrieben, es ist gut, wenn ich Leuten sage, bitte wach sein. Das ist jetzt. Okay. So stop doing Facebook. Okay. So. so we're doing Diffie Hellman. You see, I'm, I'm using more space because we're putting Oscar in the middle later on. Okay, first we look at Diffie Hellman without Oscar. Um, we have a private key A. We have a we have a public key uppercase A. Bob has the same. What do they do? How does Diffie Hellman work? Alice sends um, uppercase A over. Did you notice that the error only goes up to here? Do the same. It's not going up to here. Okay. And Oscar is going to do bad things in a minute. Um, Bob is sending over Bob is sending over B and then upon reception Alice computes K let's call that KAB which is she takes Bob's public key and raises this to her private key power. And by the way, I, I'm not using this mod P today because there, is, there, there will be enough information on the blackboard already, so I don't want to confuse you more. So, of course, you know, everything should be taken mod P, and, and P is a large prime, blah, 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 blah. And um, Bob does the same. Bob also computes the session key by taking Alice's key and raising Alice's key to his private key power. So only, only Bob can do that. So this scheme is not provable secure, but it is computationally secure. That means for practice it is secure, in particular if the numbers are large enough. You know, if, if P is a 2048-bit number and carefully chosen, you have to watch out for some other little number theoretical things, but uh, this is not even that difficult. So you can, this is secure as far as we know, be awake, if the attacker, Oscar, is only passive. So this works perfectly well if Oscar is passive. Passive, what, what, what I think I introduced it. What, what is a passive attacker? What can a pass, passive attacker do? Yeah. Exactly. Listen only. As long as you can only listen, eavesdropping is a very fancy term, lauschen, okay? So 
as long as you can only listen, this works nicely. And all the assumptions we had so far, you know, using large primes and then everything is secure, what I just mentioned, this works if Oscar can only listen. But what about an active attacker, which we have to absolutely take into account, active attacks? You know, if you communicate over the Internet, we have so little control over the channel. You know, if I'm sending an email to somebody in Belgium, I have no idea where my message is being routed. And it would be very naive to assume an attacker can only listen, but an attacker cannot change my IP packets, right? So you always have to, not always, but in most practical circumstances, we, we have to take active attackers into account. And now it's getting really, really interesting. So here is what Nasty Oscar can do. He inter inter intercepts. And what Oscar does, he generates his own public key. How does he do that? Well, he does kind of similar what Alice does, just with, I call it O, lowercase O, right? Kleines O is, is, L, is, is Oscar's private key, and let's call that O1, because he, he, we're going to have two of those. And Oscar is very sneaky. He doesn't call that, you know, here's what we're not doing, don't copy Because it, oh, this is Oscar's public key. He doesn't do that, right? I, he essentially calls this A, right? He says, A, I'm Alice's key. Okay, because this is A, you know, we call it A tilde here. A snake. And what he forwards to Bob is A tilde. He does this, you know, it's a symmetric setup, Diffie-Hellman, so he has to do that on the other side as well. It means he intercepts Bob's key, you know, that's going through the internet router. He picks a different O, a different private key, and he calls this B tilde, and B tilde is forwarded to Alice. So what happens now is very, very, very unpleasant. One thing that's not happening is Alice is not computing KAB anymore. What does Alice do? The problem is Alice doesn't see the tilde, right? Alice thinks this is B, right? You know, B is only, you know, these are 2,048 innocent bits. You know, it doesn't smell like Bob's perfume or something, right? What I'm trying to say, you get bits here which say, hey, I'm coming from Bob. Alice has no way of knowing whether they're really from Bob, so she assumes they are probably Bob's. So what she does, of course, she's following the protocol. She takes B tilde, raises it to her eighth power. But now what is this B? B this is alpha raised to, Alice, uh, to, to Oscar's um, private key, so this, she computes O2. So she does compute a Diffie-Hellman key, there's no question about that, so this is a Diffie-Hellman protocol, there's no, nothing, there's something fishy about it, but it's still Diffie-Hellman from the mathematics. But what would be a better name for this, before we call it KAB, key between Alice and Bob, what would be a better name at this point here? Loud? What, what, what should I, which, which letter should I use here? Oh, we have another 60 minutes. So. What? Any ideas? Alice, right, and who is the other person? Yeah, absolutely. So this is a session key between Alice and Oscar, except 
Alice is a little bit naive. She thinks this is KAB. She doesn't know that there's an O here, right? She doesn't know that this is the key that she computed with Oscar. And of course, the, 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 the unpleasant thing is Oscar can compute the same session key. Oscar can compute KAO. How does he do that? He takes A and raises it to the O1 power. So what happened here is Alice and Oscar did the nice little private Diffie-Hellman key exchange. There's nothing wrong with that, except Oscar, of course, knows that he's talking to Alice. Alice does not know that she's talking to Oscar. Alice still thinks this is the key she, she shares with Bob. Um... Um, I did something wrong here. Right, 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 right. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, this is This is correct. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, yeah, of course, because O2 is here. Very good. Thank you. So... Again, Alice and Oscar have established the key with each other. Since this is a metric set up, Oscar can do the same trick with Bob. How does this work? Again, Bob, let's start with Bob. Bob gets R tilde, so he's not doing that anymore. He's computing R tilde to the beef. And what, what he computes is a session key between himself, Bob, and Oscar. Oscar can do the same trick again. He can compute his, you know, the same session key, KBO, which is, um, is to the O1 power. Is this right? What happens here? Yeah, this is alpha to the O1 raised to the B power. So yeah, if you want to have somewhat of a proof that this attack works, you look where A is coming from. A is alpha to the A to the O2. And this is alpha to the B to the O1. Oscar shares a session key with Alice and one with Bob. However, Alice and Bob still think they are talking to each other. I know this is exactly what I told you before, but because this is so important, I want to write that down, still think they are talking to each other. What are, the imp what are the implications? Implications are actually quite horrible. Oscar has now full control over the communication Alice and Bob mm -hmm. 
Let's look what that means is having full control over communication. It seems a little bit vague. Has Sehr gut. Danke. Um, so what does this mean? And I did that in the past. Sometimes I did that in, in this drawing, and this is, becomes very messy, very unordentlich. So let's look now what happens. I mean, this was only key exchange. Nothing has happened so far. No real damage. The real damage starts, of course, if Alice and, and Bob start to exchanging um, messages. So this is now, you know, one minute later after the key exchange, one second later in the protocol. So let's say Alice wants to encrypt. I mean, there are all kind of things they want to do maybe with their session keys and maybe the most straightforward, the most best demonstration of, the, of this attack is if you do plain old encryption. So you, you have your secret email. You encrypt, let's say, using... I, I use AS at this point here. You can just use this little E symbol, the E letter, which you normally use, but I think it's, it's maybe more extreme. This is AES 256, super secure, NSA approved, you know, cannot be broken, blah, 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 blah. Which key does Alice use? Well, obviously the key she just computed, K index Alice Oscar, again, and I cannot overstress that Alice thinks this is KAB. Right? She sends Y over. And what Oscar has to do, you know, he has to be, he has to be very alert, aufmerksam. If Y would arrive here, decryption wouldn't work, right? Oscar would, start, would try to decrypt using KBO and decryption wouldn't work, right? And if, if, if Y has a check, you know, if that's a whatever, if that's an, an email, you know, if, if, if Oscar would do this here, don't copy. With KBO, and that's the only key he has, obviously, this is not X anymore, right? So that it's not an email, so it doesn't work. Yeah, but still, Oscar now Bob is going to do that, right? If the message arrives, this, we're in trouble here. So Oscar has to do something. One thing that he, probably, what, what he's probably going to do here is that he is um, definitely, he can decrypt, and which is the first problem that we have. So he can decrypt Y using the session key, session key that he shares with Alice. So this becomes K A O and three really covers X. And one thing that Oscar can do, he can stop at this point, right? He simply doesn't forward this message. Like, think about military context, you know, some kind of command that never arrived. Bob might not be waiting for a message. Oscar can read that. So this is one thing. The other thing he can do, he can forward that. But what, what does he have to do that he, so that he forwards the message so that Bob can still decrypt that, yeah? Genau, man muss das nochmal verschlüsseln mit diesem Schlüssel hier. Exactly, so he, he, he re-encrypts the message. So this option one is stopping, you know. Now comes option two is he, he encrypts X but with a different key. And of course, what we are not allowed to call that Y here. You know why? You know why? Because um, 
this y, this ciphertext, and this ciphertext are different, right? They're different bit patterns. So let's call that, what do you call that? I think y prime. Okay, so this becomes a different, different beast. And now he forwards y prime to Bob. What does Bob do? Well, Bob, you know, again, Bob is still thinking, I'm talking to Alice, so he's following kind of what follows from the, you know, what's implicit in the Ziffy-Hellman protocol, he decrypts using his, his session key. So he computes um, x is the as decryption of y prime using k b o. So that's the second thing that he can do, and there's a third variant of that which I, I, I particularly like because it's, to me, always it, it shows even more how damaging this whole thing is. And what did I write? Where did I write it though? Talked about full control over the channel. So far, we had kind of two things that we could do: either interrupt, which is not that difficult actually. You know, interrupting. You know, if you, if you can interrupt the communication, he doesn't even have to do this man in the middle. He just stops forwarding that. This is kind of getting more interesting, right? He re-encrypts, but really full control over the channel can also mean the following. Let's say this is a transfer, right? And X is the message. This is a bank. Bob is a b -b -b bank. This is Alice, right? She does e-banking. And Alice says, please transfer 10 euros into Bob's, uh, Oscar's account. Of course, it's very interesting for Oscar to change the 10 to 10,000 euros. Everybody with me? How's that real world? Yeah. So he can do this, right? He changes this, this electronic transfer, this überweisung. He changes, you know, flips a few bits. And what happens, this becomes a real Y prime here, and of course the bank gets this faked überweisung, right? The, the falsified überweisung, transfer. It's a problem, right, what we have here. So you see, really, it's, you know, from attack, this is beautiful. Okay, now comes the Now, what should I use? I write something in red, which I do text in red, which I rarely do. If you drop out of this IT security bachelor program here, please keep the following sentence in mind. Okay. The man in the middle attack works against all public key schemes. This is clear. I think this is important. Yeah, everybody with me? Do you have this yellow highlighter with this toxic ink in it? Use that at this point, right? Or hang it over your bed, right? So this is this is life lesson. This is super dangerous stuff here. There will be a homework problem. Like that the, the attack always work, and yeah, and, and now maybe discuss it. Like why does this always work? If you follow it closely, and if you're not very smart, your conclusion so far would be, oh, that's kind of a cool attack, and they're really, this is great what we can do from an Oscar's perspective. 
<laughs> but you should also think, ah, that looks very much as this is an attack against Diffie Hellman and not a general problem. So what, what you should maybe not understand is, why is this in red here, right? Well, you know, where is this statement coming from? Okay, and, and now I'm going to explain you that this is a universal attack, which is not necessarily clear at this moment. I mean, it, it, clear at this moment should be, this is a very powerful attack against Diffie Hellman. This statement says, this is a very powerful attack that works at every single time you want to do something with public key cryptography, you have this problem. Um, the question is, what is maybe the basis or the f basis of the attack? So what, I, what we really want to understand, what is fundamentally wrong with it here? What, what's happening? I mean, one thing is we look at that, well, you can exchange keys. But what is the kind of the big picture? No, not the big picture, but what is on no, a no, no, more fundamental and understanding level? What is, what is happening here? Why is this attack working? And the answer to that is um, uh, the public keys are not authenticated. Not authenticated. What do we mean by authenticated? If you go back, when we talked about digital signatures, we had a, an intermezzo, a brief interloop, uh, where we talked about um, security services. You know, in particular, this big security service I talked about this was example with buying a Volkswagen online and on repudiation. One of the other security services which we didn't really take for all that serious was authentication, message authentication. And this is happening. We're violating authentication. What's really happening in practice here is this is not only 2048 bits. 2000, sending 2048 bits over the channel without any additional information would be pretty stupid. What do I mean? At least there must be an indication, hey, these are 2000, the following 2048 bits are Alice's public key. That means this must, in practice, this is always accompanied with some kind of header, right? I call that ID. You know, ID is the identität. So it could be the email address, could be the name, or what I... Um, um, Employee number, Mitarbeiter number, your, your, um, your student number, Immatriculations number, or whatever, right? Some kind of identifying information. And this kind of ki comes as a package. What's happening now here is if Oscar runs the attack. He is. What's really happening, obviously, he is this here, right? It should be the ID of all. Don't, co don't copy, don't copy. Hey, this is Oscar's key. He's not stupid, right? So th that would put everything away because then it would say, oh, here, here's the wrong key is coming, right? So what Oscar does is, of course, this, right? He still says, here, I'm Alice's key. It's not Alice's key, right? It's Oscar's key. But he doesn't say so, right? He's lying. He's cheating. So and this is now... A, violation of, of authentication, you get, you get the, I don't know whether that's the right thing what I'm explaining, but this is, what, this is what, what's happening here. Um, this is being, or a me also message integrity, this is both violated authentication and message integrity, you know, you, you're fooling around with the message. Um, same thing, by the way, is happening here. So, and what we have to do here, we have to protect against this attack. We're done with it. Okay, so it's a very good question. You said, why don't we sign the message? Because exactly, signature protects against this kind of attack, right? This is coming from... The problem is, if you use standard digital signatures, you can again run this attack. Okay, and I haven't really talked about that here. 
maybe as response to here, why this is, and I think this is going to answer your, your, it was a very good remark. I think in order to answer your question, I really have to answer this red, you know, explain a little bit this red box here. Namely, what, what Oscar does is, if the public key is over the channel, if the public key is coming over, you know, it says, I'm Alice's public key, he replaces it with his public key. This idea, this principle always works. If you use digital signatures, you have a public key, right? Well, in, in digital signature, what, what do you use the public key for? For what function? Wofür braucht man den? Verification, exactly. So what you do, if the public key is being sent over, again, you replace the verification key, right? And Oscar puts in his verification key, and then he can do this thing. So every time Oscar can replace the public key with his own one in every asymmetric protocol. That means this, the fact that makes this attack very universal, that makes it always work, any type of public key you're doing is, is this step really here. If you see a public key, you know, which has the, the actual public key, you know, the, the number theoretical information, the 2048 bits here, cyclic groups, blah, 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 together with the ID information, you always replace only the, the actual public key, but you keep the you keep the, the identifying information the same. You can do that any public key. You could, we did a lot of public key schemes over the last three months. I could you give you any public key scheme, and I could give, give you 10 minutes, and each of you, everybody in this room, would come up against a similar attack. We could pick Elgamal encryption. We could do RSA encryption. We could do elliptic curve, Diffie-Hellman. Whatever scheme, even new wild protocols practice. You know, you might, they're not like this, there may be two pages, you know, of, ex of exchanges back and forth. A in every single instance, if I give you just a little bit of time, you could come up with a similar attack here. It's very powerful. So the question is what to do about it, and now we're going to start talking about countermeasures, namely, third chapter. Well, what you just saw here, the keys are not authenticated. The keys say, I'm coming from Alice, they're not coming from Alice. This is what we call message authentication, or for short, just authentication. So the idea is, well, we did that, you know, Professor Pa introduced, whenever it was, five weeks ago or so, we introduced digital signature, and we introduced a measure, a tool, a cryptographic tool, that provides authentication. So use a crypto tool from the crypto toolbox. That provides authentication. And there are two such tools that we have. So the two primitives that can do that, and one I already gave away. You can use digital signatures just for completeness. There's another crypto function that we can use, which we also um, introduced recently. What is, the, what is the other crypto function that provides authentication? Max, Max very good. You can use, you could, you could, you could use message authentication codes. And why is that probably a stupid idea? Without going into details, just very general consideration. Why are Macs probably not a good thing to use at this point? What are Macs based on? What type of crypto is that? 
What? What? Symmetrisch. Okay. They work beautifully, but the symmetric group. So, if you use Mac, what you have to do, you suddenly go back to the old stuff. You use symmetric cryptography to predict an asymmetric scheme. That means we have all these problems with key exchange, blah, 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 you have they're associated with Mac. So you could use beta. I mean, it would work, but you know, we, we would get all the problems we're trying to get rid of by using public key cryptography. We would reintroduce. So we don't want to use Mac. We want to use digital signatures. I just give something away, which I normally would tell you in, in 15 minutes, but just which is kind of which seems a little bit like a flaw, a failure in, in the argumentation, failure in the argumentationskette. Namely, so what I'm telling you now is okay. We use digital signatures to prevent this attack, to repair the situation. But where should be the problem with that, with this argument? Why should that be a stupid argument? Yeah. Exactly. Digital signatures are based on public key. Do you see the red box? I mean, I'm saying this attack always works against any public key scheme, and what I'm not now proposing to you is, well, let's use another public key scheme to repair all public key schemes. Right? There seems to be a conflict. Right? But we get a way out of that. Okay? This is to some extent valid, but not really, and you will see why in, towards the end of the lecture. And just to warn you, or maybe not so much to warn you, but people who really paid a lot of attention they should see the conflict. And we will see in practice you can resolve the problem. You can resolve the conflict. Um, so, and what, what do we do here? We want to prevent that Oscar, you know, rips that apart, that Oscar takes this message and replaces part of this message. And how do we do that? Well, you create um, needs a centrally trusted authority, and we did talk we did talk about trusted authorities when we talked about um, symmetric schemes, and one example was the KDC key distribution center in the case of symmetric based cryptography. And for whatever reason, we use a different name here. We call this a certifying, is that correct? Certifying authority. Or CA. This is a very common expression. If, if you Google, actually, I did... When I prepared the lecture notes, I googled a little bit in Wikipedia, a little bit with that. You get like a million hits if, 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 you, if you Google for certifying authority or CA. So what's the idea here? Now every user, and now we change terminology, but it's really, this is one thing why I like this lecture. If you look at this whole literature that deals with CA certifying authorities, root certificates, chains of trust, blah, 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 blah. There are books written, you know, 380 pages books. It all boils down to this very simple thing here. So what you're doing, what a certificate really is, a certificate is only a public key. If you whatever, if you get this warning in your web browser, certificate not valid and stuff, what this really means is it's not a valid it's not a valid public key that we really know that we can check. The idea is very, very simple. Alice, instead of, from now on, instead of using just her naked public key, she's using a certificate. But again, think from now on, think about certificate as being a public key. So certif certificate for Alice, and of course you can use any, any name here, is at its core, it's just... Alice's public key, together with the ID of Alice, so exactly what we have at this point here. It's just this here. Okay. But now we have to protect that, and how to protect that? Well, we just kind of agreed, let's try digital signatures. A signature needs, obviously, a private key, right, to... to to uh, uh, 
yeah, for, 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 for computing it. Oh, this, this is k public of Alice. So k public of Alice and the ID of Alice get digitally signed and that's a certificate. The question is who who computes it, who does this? Who is allowed to who is allowed to compute this digital signature? This is k private, you know, for people who like index, index, index in, indices, comma C A. So this is how it works. This is, um, and I, this is page, generating of certificates. This is page. Three four five three hundred forty five in the textbook, which is over there. So it's this is kind of simplified, obviously, but this is how, how it roughly works in practice. So Alice wants a pub, wants a certificate. It means she what she really wants. She, she wants to have some protection for a public key. So she goes to the CAA, which is some kind of. Sometimes they are actual commercial entities, they are also sometimes governments that, that actually issue CAs here. So she sends a request with her public key and her ID. <coughs> the first thing that the CA has to do, <coughs> it's one of these things that are not part of crypto, she has to verify the identity. This is not an easy thing. Who is with an internet bank here in this room? Wer macht internet banking? It's an internet bank, so... In Stieber, right? They have the same problem, right? You open a new account, how do they, in, you know, it's tempting for you to open an account in my name, for instance, right? And then do a big disk book edit and, you know, yeah, all this thing. So, um, the same with, you know, how, how do banks really identify, you know, make sure they're talking to the right uh, person? Particularly on the internet, this is not always an easy issue, right? You, maybe you, ideally, you should show up there, show your, Personal ausweis, your national ID card, or your passport, or your birth certificate. This is all stuff we're not discussing here in this lecture. So, um, and now the CA signs. Right? She computes, she takes this stuff here, this information, she computes the signature here, and let's call that S index A, and then the certificate becomes just as we just saw, this kind of the raw information together with the signature over this information, and this whole thing becomes. Certifying A. Okay. Good. So, if we do that, what can we do from now on? Now let's look at Diffie Hellman with certificates. We have Alice. We have Bob and we have Oscar. So Alice has S before A is K private, upper, lowercase a, uppercase A is K public. Bob has also lowercase b is his private key. Uppercase b is his public key. Alice sends now, this is the whole idea, she's not sending over just her private key or her ID information. She's sending over a certificate. 
consisting of A, ID of A, and now we use this term SR here, S lowercase a, which is a signature. Bob does the same. He's sending his certificate, which consists of his public key, his ID information, you know, his maybe his email address, together with S index B, means the signature over that information. And now the cert certificate arrives at Bob's side, right? Bob gets Alice's certificate. What is the first thing that he has to do now? Before he actually does the Diffie-Hellman stuff, what does he do first? What is this whole idea? What is this one verb, two Wort, <laughs> I'm waiting for? What do you do with a certificate if you get a certificate? What is a certificate? Certificate is just public key with a digital signature. What do you do if you get a digital signature? Verify. Good. So you verify. So Bob takes certificate of A, Alice's certificate, and this is his whole idea. This is just an application of a digital signature. You verify this, and you get, of course, a you know, true or false statement. And if it's a false statement, there's something wonky. Maybe Oscar is in the middle. If it's correct, which we hope it's, yeah. But, uh, ha, 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 ha. What kind of key do we need at this point? Your verification needs a key. What, what kind of key do we need, public or private? Public, of course. Well, this, is for, this is the easy part, okay? The hard part, whose public key? Wessen öffentlicher Schlüssel? CA. Very good. Skip this. There's this CA, this trusted authority. Why do we do that? Well, if you see here, who's, is, who's doing the signing? CA. You see, you see this here? Actually, only this index. Can I do that? Uh, no. Okay. This signature is computed with the algorithm of the certifying authority, if you want to verify the signature, we need the, the CA key. If this checks out correctly, what does Bob know? Bob knows now for sure that this is actually Alice's key. That means he can actually do the Diffie-Hellman. He can compute KAB, which is alpha to the... No, which is uppercase A to the B, which is alpha A B. Alice can do the same. Alice verifies Bob's certificate using the also the public key of the certifying authority of the CA. If this turns out to be correct, she can also do her side of the Diffie-Hellman. That means she can compute KAB, which is B to the eighth power, which is alpha to the B to the A. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, there are two things I want to discuss at this point. Very important, and we need five more minutes. And actually, the last five minutes, which is kind of unusual, sometimes towards the end, it's kind of comes some kind of additional information. And if you're asleep or you have to go to the next lecture, that's perfectly fine. This is wrong today. The last five minutes are not the most important one, but they're quite important. There are two things I want to explain. Maybe the main thing is, no, not the main, yeah. So maybe the main thing is, do we really prevent the attack? And we haven't really talked about it. What about Oscar? Oscar probably wants to do the same trick again. That means Oscar would like to do 
to do the following, Oscar would like to he calls it a tilde here, right? To, to forward a faked public key, or a tilde. And of course, he can, this he can do, right? If he has channel control over the channel, he can do that. What is the problem with this step now here? Where, where, will, where will this, this attack by Oscar fail? At which, which step here of, of this blackboard? Yeah? No, there's no, he, he, doesn't need to, he doesn't need to sign anything here. He's just doing this stuff. Verification fails here, right? Is this clear? Because this, the sig what, what CA has signed, the signature is over Alice's public key here at this point, right? And you jumped, to, you, you jumped one step ahead, which was absolutely right. So he knows this will fail, right, at this point. Signature doesn't check out, it doesn't verify. So what does he have to do? He has to issue a fake certificate, right? So what, what, what Oscar would really like to do, what he would really like to do, is to compute a signature. I have to be careful. Yeah. He would like to, to compute a tilde. You know, this is his fake public key together with ID of Alice. And can he do that? Well, first thing, he buys my book. He watches the video, right, so for free. So he knows how digital signature work, right? He uses RSA 2048. He knows he needs a private key here. He gets that from the video. The problem is he needs a... He needs this, the private key that belongs to the CA, which he hopefully does not have. All right. You can imagine this. Yeah? Yeah, like, yes, yeah, so like K private CA slash Oscar, something like yeah. this. Sehr gut, sehr gut, sehr gut. Yeah. Right, right, right. Right, right, yeah. So now this is, this is number two. Very, very good. So, so first of all, he, I'll come back to that in 60 seconds, okay? First stay here. He cannot do that. He doesn't have the CA key. Have you heard this term like root certificate or root key? This is this here. If you are an attacker, if you get this key from like very science, this is one of the big companies that, you know, makes money with selling certificates, if you get this CA key, you know, this, and the root key is just, is just, you know, an RSA or elliptic curve or an, um, a, a discrete logarithm key, if you get this key, hell is loose, right? You hell is loose. You, I mean, because you can start issuing fake certificates. This would be really bad. A Microsoft root key, super difficult. A, a super, it would be tremendous consequences. And if you, it's actually quite interesting to see how people protect their CA keys. They are companies, and this, I'm, I'm, I'm not kidding, this sounds like a wild story. The people in Switzerland, you know, you know, one thing that distinguishes Switzerland from most other countries, a lot of big mountains. Yeah? And during the Cold War, they actually dug bunkers, bunker, in the mountains. The people renting out these atombombensichere bunker places in the Alps to have super secure servers here where the CAs are in. You know, a lot of physical security and stuff. They're super, super sensitive. Why, if you can do that, the, the whole system collapses. And like internet-wide, you can start issuing false certificates. You don't want to do that. So this is the first thing I wanted to say. So the attack here doesn't work. But now the Comlitone, he jumped, the student, he jumped one step ahead. Very smart idea, he said. Okay, 
He's coming up with his own CA key, right? So he, he just takes any kind of signing key, any kind of RSA key here. And of course, this would fail here at this point. But now what he... And that was his really, really good idea, what I kind of omitted hier, was ich noch nicht, was ich uh, 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 nicht gesagt habe. What he needed at this point, of course, you know, somewhere there must be the CA, and the CA has to Everybody with me? This is Yes, again, CA is just essentially a public key service, a public key, al a public key algorithm is active. And now the idea is, use this red box over there, this is just a public key algorithm, why don't we do a man-in-the-middle attack? And where do we have to do that at this point? Right? If you run a man-in-the-middle attack at this point, you can exactly do your attack. And this is kind of what I said in the beginning, when I started the certificate stuff, 30 minutes ago or 20 minutes ago, I said there is, seemed to be some kind of uh, 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 um, missing link in this argument because I'm using public key to protect public key, but then I have this universal attack that always works. And this is exactly the point. You, you paid very, very good attention here. In theory, Oscar can take the, run the attack here, absolutely. And if, you know, if, 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 if he interferes here, If he interferes and he sends this to Bob, he can issue his fake certificates, the whole thing collapses. And now is the question, this is a real world question, it has nothing to do with this protocol, this is now step outside the blackboard, step outside the course, think about the real world. Why can we, why is this in difficult practice? What, what, what can the CA, what can we as you know, human mankind, the mankind, what can we do so that this attack becomes pretty difficult. Yeah? Yeah, yeah but the question, we can synchronize that, and they, I don't think they, they're doing that anymore, but they were in the, um, and they're similar to this, uh, he said synchronize, essentially check that, right? There's, um, what the New York Times, which is a big major newspaper in the U.S., what they did in their Sunday edition, the Sonntagsausgabe, what they did for during the 1990s, I don't know whether they still did, did that, they printed a big public key in the New York Times, Sunday editions. So you could, if you wanted, you can, you know, hand-check the hex symbols and look whether you really had to read the original one or the faked one. So this is one way of doing that, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is one thing. But it's, it's even better. Here's kind of the solution to the problem. How often do you have to exchange this public key here, the green one? In an ideal world, only once, right? And here's what's happening. If, is anybody using Microsoft Windows? Yeah, okay. So if you have Microsoft, if you have an original Microsoft Windows product and, or, or Thunderbird web browser, if you get this stuff, the web browsers have these keys pre-installed, okay? And so what it boils down to, of course, you need, a, you need an authenticated link, you must make sure this, this transmission happens correctly, but only once at setup time. And if you buy an original Microsoft uh, uh, um, product, unless somebody fiddled around, you know, <coughs> put another uh, uh, um, key in, in, in the, in the uh, um, CD that you're using to installing that stuff, Unless this happened, if you buy an original CD that has been tempered with, you have the public key. And once you have this one public key, you essentially have one. This is the whole idea. Okay? Of course, yes, certificates are, in principle, vulnerable against man-in-the-middle attack, against these you know, CA public keys. But if you're a little bit careful, you make sure that at, at setup time, once you get the real public key installed, you win. Um, I stop at this point. There is a, we could probably, and I'm, I'm, I'm only half exaggerating, we could probably spend a whole semester now talking about the real world implication. Maybe seven weeks, maybe half a semester. But we stop at this point and let's do the homework and then let's see what, what's happening next week. Okay? Thank you very much.